Hey everybody, welcome to Mark Bell's Power Project Podcast. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by our homies over at Free Sleeve. Uh, last night in SEMA, I was cooking up some dinner and my elbow's been bugging me. You know, I'm benching, my elbow's just always kind of messing with me. But what I did last night is I threw on an elbow sleeve and I was able to cook while still, uh, you know, using some cold therapy. How yourself have you been using cold therapy? Yeah, no, I love this uh, Free Sleeve because after like jujitsu or powerlifting or bodybuilding type training, I like to wait a few hours, and especially after that, my joints are feeling kind of achy right before I go to bed I put on the free sleeve on my elbows and knees and it just feels great to be able to move around while getting that reduction in pain and this is kind of an off thing that nobody really thinks about when your body temperature comes down at night it's actually easier to fall asleep so it actually helps you go to sleep a little bit better which is again great for recovery triple whammy so check it out Upgrade your ice packs today by heading over to freesleeve.com. That's F R E E Z E S L E E V E.com. At checkout, enter promo code POWER25 for 25% off your order and free shipping on all domestic orders. I don't know who, I don't know who it was. It was a, a much, uh, it, it was a lighter weight class guy, but he was like, I mean, he's unbelievably shredded. And they were talking about how the other guy wasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, let's see what happens, you know? Who won the fight, do you know? I, I, don't, I don't remember. Was it know? this weekend? I can look it, it up. It was this weekend, yeah. Um, Dana White was talking about it, and he was like, he was like, uh, the, the guy they were talking about that didn't have a great physique was Mexican. And they're like, well, there's a, he's like, there's a lot of Mexican fighters that don't have great physiques that kick the shit out of people. Yeah, so yeah. that was probably uh, Moreno. Before um, you start the mic, let me know. I want to ask you guys something. I, we we something are on idea. right now. Dang it. I could mute it real quick. Mute it real quick. Okay, hold And we're back. <laughs> and we're in there. And sorry for that little uh, behind the scenes thing that you guys saw, but didn't hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're up and running uh, real quick. Louis Pena's in the house. Soul Train was the first one to comment. So shout oh. out to you two. Thank you guys for checking in. Appreciate Soul Train. it. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Soul Train? <laughs> I've seen it before, yeah. <laughs> okay. I have. I actually, yeah. I was actually, I actually <laughs> never have, no. I've only seen like the the line yeah. and the movie with Snoop Dogg and Kevin Hart mm. looks, it looks amazing Soul Plane Soul Plane. <laughs> Soul Plane Soul Plane I have not seen Soul That's Plane a funny that was movie. a really funny movie <laughs> I've seen it's Snakes so on the stupid. Plane that was a terrible movie oh God. what a what a horrible title <laughs> even like they couldn't even come up with a good name Samuel L. Jackson like you can't forget that shit right what was the line <laughs> I said you can't forget it and then I can't yeah, remember the um, exact line I'm tired of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane <laughs> something like that yeah, yeah. Oh, that was great that was really good. A fucking shark <laughs> from the Dave Chappelle skit. <laughs> I can't stop yelling. That's just how I talk. Yeah. I oh, love God. that shit. And All right. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about getting leaner, leaning out or how to get lean, I guess, in the mm-hmm. first place. And uh, I think, you know, it's going to be really different for each person um, because we're all just built so differently. So, but, uh, you know, for this show in particular, we're going to kind of keep this in the range of like um you wanting to get like a better physique uh aesthetically and you're trying to i guess you'd say like get ripped Mm -hmm. maybe not stage ready because not that many people care about that part of it but uh you're trying to look good even with your shirt off and i said earlier before we started the show i think a good goal for everybody is to look good in a t-shirt like every a goal for every guy would be to look good in a t-shirt I think is a good start. Um, and then even, you know, for guys that are bigger and they're coming down in weight, I mean, just try to drop your pants size a bunch, you know, like try to, you're a 42 or a 40 or a 38 or whatever it is. And, 
just make it a goal like over the next year that you want to kind of drop down uh, some of those sizes and and still look good and still have some uh, decent muscle mass. But in terms of like getting lean and getting shreddy shredderton, um, <laughs> we're talking a little bit more about you know people that are getting close to having like a bicep vein mm-hmm. and a little bit further on or that or they want to progress towards that. And so uh, today we'll talk about like you know what do we think we should you should do? What are the best strategies? I think in Seema and I and and Andrew are, are all like minded on this topic is that so much of this is going to be very much dependent on your nutrition and a lost and forgotten element of nutrition element. You see how I dropped that in there? <laughs> Thank you to our sponsor, Element. <laughs> Drink com slash power project. There you go. A huge element of nutrition is that you have the nourishment that you need to train hard. And I have made this mistake many times with going on a keto diet or with fasting, intermittent fasting and things like that, where my food intake wasn't supplying me with that extra thing that you need in the gym to push hard. And so I think it's really important that people, they leaning out is great and getting in shape is great. But I think that you want it to be a longer game Mm -hmm. than you're just like lean for a particular day. Cause if you're just lean for a particular day, that can be cool and you can get some nice photos and stuff. But a lot of times there's, there's more suffering that happens like right before you do your shoot or stage ready or whatever it is that you're doing. And there's going to be some compromise and your training is going to suffer. But we're talking about more here today is how can you get lean in good shape and still live your life, still do your jujitsu, still power lift, still, still be strong, still be functional in the gym, still go to work and be, be normalish. Yeah. So let's kind of open it up to that. Well, you know, talking from the, the, uh, side of individuals that I guess maybe are heavier and that are dropping, um, you know, when you start, like, let's say you're really heavy, let's say you're in 30% body fat or whatever, you can start losing a lot of weight quickly and be okay. Um, but over time of doing that, as you, let's say you're starting at 300 pounds, you know, every week, if you dropped three, like three, four pounds, that could last you for a while if you have a lot of body fat on. But once you start getting to like 18, so 20%, 18%, 17, 16, things should start slowing down. I think one misconception that a lot of people have, and I've, I've, I've noticed this is that when people start getting to that point and they start continuing to try to lose body fat and weight really fast, like they're trying to rush it off. Let's say now they're getting down to like 18% and they're still trying to drop, you know, 4% of their 4% or 5% of their body fat each week. That is really, really fast. And what's going to start happening is you're at a place where now you have a little bit lower body fat and you're trying to spare muscle tissue. But if you drop and if your focus is just losing all of this weight really quickly, you're going to also lose a lot of muscle at the same time. Um, And also what tends to happen to those people is that when they do maybe get they they get down to a desired weight um, when done really quickly because they were losing a lot of muscle mass, they weren't able to maintain that muscle and then they don't achieve a look that they were expecting because they did it too quickly. They lost too much muscle. Um, and now they just kind of look like a skinnier version of themselves. Mm. And then the second thing, and this is more something that is just kind of, I guess, anecdotal or just something that I tend to just notice is that when people do it quickly and they get down to that weight, it's very hard for them to maintain that Mm. weight for a long period of time. And the primary reason for that is to lose weight quickly. You typically are doing an excessive amount of cardiovascular work (laughs) or number two, you're eating a ridiculously low amount of food for your body weight so you can lose it quickly. And then when you get there, you can't keep eating that low amount of food for the continuation of whatever, how you look, and you can't keep doing that crazy amount of cardio. Mm. So one's going to have to go. Either you start eating a lot of food and you rebound or you stop doing the cardio because you couldn't maintain it and you rebound. Mm. But if it's done slowly and you do something you can maintain for the duration of your cut, you get there, you can stay there for longer, and then you can you can maintain that look. Mm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think uh, we've seen this so, so many times, and 
uh, I'm sure there's research on it even, but I know that Joel Green, who we've had on the podcast, if you guys haven't heard him, you got, you got to go back and listen to some of the podcasts we've done with him. But he talks about, in short, I'm not going to bastardize it too much, but basically if you can kind of picture, uh, when you go to lose, when you go to lose fat, um, picture that you have like these kind of strings, uh, that are, that are pulling on your effort to lose fat, almost like a spider web. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually you'll lose a lot of fat and you'll get that, um, you'll get everything to kind of close off, but you still have those bands attached to you. You still have those strands, those webs, you still have those webs attached to you. And it takes a long time to kind of shake that. I'm, this is not scientific. This is just a, a an example of, of what is happening. So when you do that quickly and you bring that web in real fast, the rebound for that is going to be great. And we see it happen all the time with men and women. We sometimes see women that are s the smaller females that compete and they look great and they do a great job. And then they rebound and we hear them gain like 40 pounds or something, which is mm -hmm. crazy. And we hear the guys do it too, but for the women, it's a larger percentage of their body weight uh, where they're just, they're packing that on quick. And it's just something to be uh, very cautious of and, and, and careful of. So if you do this stuff uh, over a period of time and you do it in a reasonable way, you don't have to worry about that as much. I think it's important to lose weight in stages. I've talked about this many times. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. It's not the only way to do it, but I've seen it have the most long lasting effects where I see somebody and they lose, you know, 30 pounds. And then I talk to them again, three months from them. They're like, Oh yeah, I'm back up like 10 pounds, you know, then they get themselves back to it and they're like, Oh, and I say, Oh shit, you look great. You know, and they, they lost another 20. Right. And it, it will go back and forth a little bit. I think that's to me, I think that's reasonable. I think your body is going to be accepting of that. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it sometimes seems like it doesn't matter what I eat or what I do. I'm the same fucking weight almost all the time. <laughs> I've been 240 pounds since I was 16 years old and I've had huge variations of it, right? I, yeah. I've been, you know, 330 and I've been, I've been all over the place, but I can step on the scale at just about any time and I can say, yep, I'm going to be 240. Mm -hmm. And even with not eating a lot of food. So the homeostasis type thing where your body is kind of seeking balance and it wants to be the same all the time. Uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of truth to it. Obviously if we, if I reduce what I eat and I expend a lot of energy, if I do that for a long period of time, obviously I'll lose weight and I could get leaner and all that stuff. But it is um, you working against who you truly are. And it's very hard to change that. And it's just, it's this pull that happens, all, you know, consistently. And eventually, uh, you'll be pulled back into the body weight that you normally are. Dude, that what, what you said right there though, that's that, uh, that's that neat in action, that uh, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Because when you say you've been too, like, I, like I'm, I've also been the same weight for like the, nat, the past, shoot, it's probably been two years now that I've been this weight. Um, and before that I was like 250 and 260 something. But with all the like the jujitsu stuff or whatever, I wanted to cut down to this weight. But the only reason I've been able to stay at this weight was because when I got here, I literally just chilled here for a long time. And this became the new normal. Now, if there's times where I eat a lot of food, I have the drive to go do a lot of work. Mm. Like it's not even that I, it's not even that I'm just like, I need to go work out. It's like, I really feel like I have to go do something because mm. like, it's, it's like, I want to. But then when I start, like, if there's a time that I start fasting a little bit longer, I have the less drive to go do more, to, to go do excessive amount of work or burn excessive amount mm. of calories. It's that neat in action. Like now this is where your body weight wants to be. And no matter if you eat higher or lower, you're doing things to keep you there. So that, there is the problem though, for if you are a heavier person and you're now trying to cut, right? And you're eating less food and you're doing all this work, your body's like, hmm, okay, well, this is okay for now, but there's going to be a certain point where everything's going to just stop for a while, you know, and your body's going to be like, huh, I, I think I want to put some weight back on, or you should start eating more. It fights against you because your your normal was a little bit higher. You're literally getting messages of like you should sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you you are like your body's signaling at you, like, hey man, like I don't know I don't know what plans you have, but this doesn't look good. Like we're stripping the body of body fat, and even when you have body fat, I don't know if the body knows or has a register system of like knowing how much you have. 
Like the body's not like, yeah, dude, we're fat. You got a great point. This is fantastic. <laughs> and we're just going to like, we're just going to let all this go. I think the body's fearful. And it's like, I, I don't, we stored this fat for you because we think that you were eating for some occasion. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go hibernate. Yeah. It's going to get fucking cold out or whatever the hell it is. Right. We, we didn't know. We didn't know that you were going to, you know, get 200 pounds overweight or whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that there's that constant kind of pull towards being, you know, back, back where you were at some point. Remember, you know, there's things that we share on this podcast and sometimes you might just be tuning in for the first time. We say this countless times, always get used to your food first, you know, get used to whatever diet it is that you choose. Let, let's just say that you've decided, you know, based off of listening to some of these shows that you want to eat a, uh, kind of a whole foods diet. You want to eat uh, meat, fruit, vegetables, <laughs> And pretty much uh, stick to that cate those categories. You're going to be successful. I mean, th those foods are are great. There's there's probably there might be a time where after a while you might need to f even figure out how to reduce some of the amount of those foods because maybe you're eating too much fat or maybe you're just uh, eating too much in general would be the real issue, right? And so I think it, it just always needs to be pointed out that you should take about a month or so just to get used to your new food. Like if you're, if you haven't really dieted much before, mm -hmm. it, you, you know, you just get used to the food. And I'll promise you that if you haven't done this before, you will get leaner. Oh yeah. Easy. You'll get in better shape. If you have a, if you have four to six meals a day where there's protein involved and you have a small uh, portion of carbohydrates a couple times a day, eat some fruit, eat some vegetables, you're going to be, and get some exercise in, you're going to be in great shape. Mm-hmm. You're going to be in fantastic shape, but there might be a time where you might need to work on reducing it down, but that's not right off the bat. You don't need to do that right away. And same thing when you start a keto diet, even a veteran diet, or even someone that does a bodybuilding show, someone that's, they're like 16 weeks prep for the Mr. Olympia competition. They don't start out by going 1500 calories. They don't start out by dropping everything down and doing an hour of cardio right, a day, right away. They, they take their time with it. They kind of ease their way into it. They let their body get used to each new position, uh, each new amount of calories that they're eating. And then they, they make changes and they make shifts as they go along. Uh, let's quickly just like, focus on, not focus on, but let's talk about that. The whole foods aspect of everything, because like, I think both of us, if we were both uh, still eating quite a bit of cereal or like a lot of hyper palatable, palatable foods, <laughs> right, that we really like, um, I don't think we'd be able to maintain this. I'd be fat. <laughs> like, you know, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have much more fat on my frame because when I start going down on cereal and foods going that down I like, on yes, going down <laughs> on cereal, I can go, I can eat a lot of that for a long I time. I just pictured him eating it with his hands behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all up in the Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Raisin Bran Crunch, actually. People think I'm weird for that, but Raisin Bran Crunch is the shit. Yeah, I get those it. Those little things of granola in there. I get it. And yeah. it's sugary. Oh, yeah. watch out. Yeah, those ones that are supposed to be like healthy. Those, those are, <laughs> yeah, a those lot of those terrible. taste really fucking good. They're so like good. Like vanilla, almond, something or other. Oh, yeah. Cereal. It's like kills you. It's amazing. Yep. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> but like, that's, that's one thing, you know. Um, you will lose weight really quickly if you're coming from the place where you're eating a lot of like sugary foods, you're drinking a lot of calorie, like high calorie drinks, you get rid of that stuff in your life and you like, you give yourself time to get used to getting rid of it. A lot of that weight's just going to drop off easily. And, and that's, sometimes that's yeah. the first place to start. It's mm -hmm. just to like, Hey, get rid of, you know, you have yogurt with sugar in it. You're, you have drinks several times a day. And, um, I mean, between that and just adding in some protein to your day, I think you're, you're good to go. This, this topic that we're talking about of like, having enough nutrition to power you through some good workouts is I can't stress it enough how important it is. And that's why when we talk to Stan or we talk to, um, we had Chris Aceto on the podcast, mm -hmm. Chris Aceto just made everything seem so dumb. Mm -hmm. He really did. He was just like, yeah, you got to eat protein, carbs, protein, carbs, protein, carbs, protein, carbs. And he, the reason why he he's sticking to that is because the people that he works with, they end up having a high energy output each day, which goes towards building muscle. Remember, we're talking about, so we are talking about leaning out, but we're not just talking about stripping body fat. 
we want to hold muscle slash aka sometimes even build muscle mass right mm -hmm. um it kind of just depends on your exact goals those things can be hard to chase at the same time uh i do think that sometimes the newer newer lifters can get that we yeah, see like can. you know see them guys like blow up and they gain 10 pounds on the scale but they're way leaner and you're like i don't know what's going on with this guy mm -hmm. but that's kind of those uh those newbie gains but the reason why these guys stick to their guns on what they're saying is that it works it just might take a little bit more time it might take a little bit more time it might take some tweaking because you might eat 300 carbs a day and maybe that doesn't suit your body or maybe you're just eating uh, too many calories overall and you got to make a change or a shift same thing with fat maybe you're just eating a little too much of it and something needs to change but you'll tweak that and you'll be fine we're talking about really trying to augment the body so if you were to lose if you didn't see somebody for six months and you lost 10 pounds, they, I don't think they would really notice much, you know, especially if you're a bigger person, you know, if you weighed like 250 and now you weigh 240, they might notice a little bit from your face or something like that, but they're mm -hmm. probably not going to really, they're probably not going to really notice. If you, if you lost five pounds of fat and gained five pounds of muscle, which would be difficult in six months, but if you're newer to some of this, anything's possible. I think someone would be like, hey, <clears throat> what you been doing, man? Like if you're in a tank top or something, mm -hmm. they're like, shit, man, like you've made some changes because that's going to be noticeable. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to at least at the very least hold on to some muscle mass. Hopefully you already have some. If you don't, we'll have to talk about that for another show. But we're trying to augment the body and we see too many people kind of end up with that melted candle look where they yeah. diet so hard, which is great. I, I commend you for that. That's awesome. Uh, but then you go so far on the diet side that you're not supplying yourself with enough nutrients to get in good, efficient workouts and to supply your body with what it needs for the muscle to stay. We need that muscle to stay because the muscle is going to, it's part of our metabolism. It's part of what goes into the equation of us burning energy. It, it adds to us burning energy. I mean, think about that. What a great investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you work on something now. Uh, physically through the gym, through some sleep, and through some food. And yes, it does take time, but that thing's going to be working for you down the road. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. And it, on that note of uh, maintaining muscle as you drop down, there are, there are two things that you can do um, outside of making sure that you like eat just enough calories, but there are two things that you need to do to make sure that you can maintain that muscle. Number one is as you're dropping weight to, you know, get leaner, um, you have to obviously do a good amount of weight training each week, or you should, you should at least be hitting each body part twice a week. That could be in three sessions. That could be in five sessions, but keep the stimulus in that muscle tissue don't and and you don't need to train in a way that like you're doing 30 rep sets or whatever for some reason there there's well i think it's i used to believe it too or i used to think that you have to do much higher reps when you're trying to drop weight no that's that's a myth you can keep doing the things you're doing but just keep that stimulus on that muscle as you're dropping because if you are losing weight only doing cardio and only working your legs but you don't work your upper body <laughs> as you get leaner like your legs are going to continue to gain muscle and your upper body is going to lose muscle mm -hmm. so so keep the stimulus on everything and then the second thing is you always talk about this we always talk about this you need to be eating enough protein at least a gram per pound um or just like yeah let's just let's just stick with a gram per pound or 1.3 1.4 grams per pound because that's going to make sure that you have a, you're eating enough protein to maintain the muscle you have as you drop weight um if you do those two things and you're losing weight you can almost be sure that you're going to be maintaining a, close to as much muscle tissue as possible that's going to be the biggest thing but the one thing that a lot of people miss out on is when they're dropping they're not paying attention to their protein they're just eating less food so that they can drop um, and they see the scale going down and that's a good thing but again like we mentioned at the beginning you don't want to be losing all that muscle because you'll have that melted candle look yeah mm -hmm. and then this question comes in from facebook and i know we're talking about like kind of somebody who's already on their way with you know the weight loss journey but um they just asked about the one gram of protein per pound of body weight mm -hmm. but what if you're 100 pounds overweight so that's where like we can go into pound uh grams per pound of lean muscle mass mm -hmm. so that's why when i was saying one gram per <clears throat> pound i was like oh, let's just stick to that if you're 100 pounds overweight let's say that what you're 300 pounds and your goal is to be around 
you want to lose 80 pounds or 100 pounds. You want to get down to 200. Um, you can get like a measurement, like you can do one of those things where you do the in-body scanner, mm -hmm. or you could figure out if your body fat's like 30%. Ah, shoot, now we're doing numbers. Well, some people <laughs> even say, you know, just to like whatever weight that you want to be to try Start to eat that in grams yeah. of protein. I, I would still say if you're a hundred pounds overweight, I, you, you probably enjoy food, you know, yeah. that this has already been established at some point that you have been overeating at some point, you're a hundred pounds overweight. So I think eating those grams of protein, I think will be fine. But again, just make adjustments as you go. I don't, I'm not of the belief that you would uh, have any repercussions. However, when you eat that much protein, protein doesn't really come by itself, mm -hmm. you know, especially, uh, especially steaks and things like that, even though we got Piedmontese, which is really mm -hmm. lean and tender steaks, which you should get. Andrew, to hook them up. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. That is over at Piedmontese.com, P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com, promo code POWERPROJECT for 25% off your order. And if your order is $99 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Back to the show. So if you were going to eat 200 grams of protein and um, you were eating a little bit of steak and hamburger mm -hmm. meat and, and, and pork and stuff like that, uh, it's fairly obvious that you would that that would accompany some fat calories as well and so that's where you might run into an issue uh is when you're eating the protein it's going to be you know accompanied by something else but i would get your 300 grams in and just make adjustments later on you know make adjustments as you as you go along if if you find that uh you know you're struggling to lose weight yeah and you can make those adjustments. It's like, I think that's a good idea because number one, if you're eating that much protein, you're not going to have the appetite to eat a lot of food anyway. Like you're not going to eat an insane amount of carbs and a lot of fat. It's going to be kind of difficult to do that. But what's going to happen is you're going to make the adjustment to drop that protein um, just a bit over time because you're going to get better at dieting. Mm -hmm. So to answer that specific question, um, if you figure out what your lean body mass is, let's say that your lean body mass is like 180 or whatever, then you could do like one to 1.4 grams a pound of lean body weight of, of muscle tissue. So you're 300 pounds, you have 180 pounds of muscle tissue. So you could be eating 180 to 100 and, or 180 to like 220 grams of protein. Um, when you get to that point where you, you're like, you're comfortable eating that much or eating that amount of protein. But starting with like, 300 isn't a bad idea because you're going to be eating so much protein. You're going to be so full mm. that you're going to naturally be dropping a lot of body fat anyway. Yeah. So it's just an easier just, way to do it. And you might just add in some vegetables and you might have exactly what you need to start because you probably don't really need a lot of carbohydrate energy. So you have some, some fat, some protein, some vegetables, and you should be good to get started on dropping some weight. Mm. Yeah. I've noticed uh, when I drop, not drop, but just kind of like, ah, I don't feel like doing my steady state cardio today. And then it's like, okay, then the next time it comes around, like, ah, okay, maybe I won't do it. I'll just go lift. But I notice when I do stay on track with that, which was, would be like every other day, I start to get my bicep vein coming back. I get it on my left side pretty easily. My right side takes a little bit of work for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your guys' thoughts on hitting cardio, I don't know, four times a week? I would say that uh, cardio can be great, like especially if you if you don't have a really active hobby. You yeah. know, I think Encima doesn't have to nice. worry about it because his hobby is pretty active. Um, we had uh, John Berardi on the show, and his hobby is track. So it's like, does that guy need to worry about? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Sisson... Another person we've had on the podcast in the past, he plays Ultimate Frisbee. So he's down on the beach doing sprints and stuff, kind of prepping for that. And mm -hmm. he lifts. It's like he doesn't need to, there's absolutely no reason for him to do cardio. Mm -hmm. um, somebody like Stan Efferding, he's always been a lifetime long ectomorph, somebody who's always been fairly thin, even though he's jacked as hell. Mm -hmm. Does, you know, what? why would he do cardio? Like he would have to give us a good explanation on why he's doing cardio. Maybe it would be for cardiovascular purposes. Maybe he's got some goal, but mm. I think for most people in general, a little bit of cardio can go a long way. It's just chewing up some glucose. It's chewing up some calories. And uh, just if you're, if you're not really that active other than your, other than your lifting, then it might not be a bad option. Mm hmm yeah like also like exactly you know if your hobby or your job doesn't have you doing a lot of work like i work with like, some individuals that literally just, they just work outside mm -hmm. they do construction they don't need cardio like they really don't because they're on their feet all day they're moving things all day it's it's unnecessary but if you're sedentary right and you work a job where you're sitting most of the day you, you get up maybe you get in a few walks and then you only do some weight training um 
you're either going to have to eat really low amounts of food in terms of like your, your, your total amount of food, or you, you should probably, you really should just add in some cardio for health. Like there shouldn't be any reason you can't do cardio unless you absolutely, and this is rare, but you really don't have the time to do 30 minutes of something mm -hmm. or 20, not even 30 minutes. Let's not even start there. 15 to whatever, 15 to 20 minutes of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been pretty easy. So like, I, like I've always just um, gone off the calories off of my treadmill. So like, I'll just be a minimum 500 calories. I get that done, like watching YouTube in 40 minutes. Right. It's chill. And then if I'm walking with family or whatever, that's, yeah, it's about, I don't know, it's a little bit more, but mm -hmm. that's because we're walking on flat ground and just kind of hanging out. But you know, like I've been telling, well, we've been talking me and Mark, but um, just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not like really focused on any major physique goal right now, but I'm just always doing something. Yeah. And then just doing that has helped me maintain like, a you know, I'm not like shredded right now, but I'm not like gaining my fat back. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is just like this steady state cardio, you know, it's funny to even call it cardio because like I'm not like in, in my head back in the day, cardio was, oh, I got to be running on the treadmill. I got to be yeah. sweating. I got to somehow tune into David Goggins and, you know, be in, in that mode. Whereas now I'm like, oh, wait, I'm just going to walk uphill for a while. And mm -hmm. it's been great. And I, I, I actually like really enjoy it now. Do you think that you need to be hungry? Mm. to like in in general for most people where they're at now minus you know a couple people are listening to this that are already completely shredded um do you have to uh do you have to do you feel like you have to be hungry is that necessary to be leaner than you are currently yeah i think you do and i also think that that's that's where we kind of have to you're gonna have to make that shift over time because one of the big reasons why you might be heavier is because you always eat when you don't when you when you feel hungry you always eat when you get that little feeling of i want food um and one of the ways to or one of the habits necessary to have you know as you're getting leaner and to get that body that you want to have is when you feel hungry you don't always respond to that you don't always respond to the feeling because like i'll feel hungry this morning but i know that after 20 minutes of us talking it's going to go away um, and a lot of people are not comfortable with that. So when they start dieting and now they're eating a little less food, maybe, um, maybe they're making better food choices, but they're, they're eating a little less food. When they have that feeling of hunger, they're like, Oh, this is the diet. Oh no. <laughs> and they have that, they have that feeling like multiple days in a row. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's, it should be normal. I think we, we do a lot of things. And, and when we talk about ways to feel satiated, cause I like to feel satiated, you know, when I eat, like, I don't like to eat and feel, huh, I could still eat a lot more. I don't like to feel that way. Right. So a lot of people talk about adding in a lot of fiber. We talk about eating more protein cause it's satiating. But I really do think that there is a power in, um, being, being okay with being hungry a little bit, right? We haven't talked about it and we, we like, I don't want us to get into fasting too much in mm -hmm. this one because like we talk about that all the time. But for me personally, because I was such a big eater, like all the time, mm -hmm. it was the, I guess, easiest way for me to become friends with hunger and learn to not let the feeling of hunger affect my mood, affect my actions, right? And that in itself has been one of the reasons that it, that I've been able to stay lean so easily, right? So I think you do need to feel hungry. You need to be able to deal with it. Some people might need to schedule their meals. You know, you might have to go that far to kind of say, hey, I'm going to eat at, uh, you know, nine. I'm going to eat at 12, you know, whatever it is. And, and you might have to kind of schedule it so that way you have a plan. And that way you're not just sitting there randomly like eating like cheese or eating off of like a, you know, a, a, a board, you know, a charcuterie <laughs> board at like a party or whatever, or picking at some chips or whatever. That, charcuterie I, board? I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> is this some <laughs> fancy board? What is a charcuterie board? I know. It, wait, wait, is it a cooter? A, um, wait, what is a cooter? Vagine? <laughs> It should be it, it should be called a meat board. Oh, nice. There's actually a, like a <laughs> oh, I didn't see mo modern family. I think it is. Um, I think Al Bundy, the, like his wife's like, we should get the charcuterie board. And he's like, I don't he's like, I don't think I want that. He's like, I don't even know what that is. And then it comes. He's like, 
this this is what a jacuzzi <laughs> board is he's like this has such a dumb name he's like it, it it's uh he's like they'd sell a lot more of these they call it something different <laughs> Yo, when did you first discover a jacuzzi board i'm sorry like when when did it first come into your life Oh, I don't know. It, you've never seen a board with like salami and I have, but when did you know it was called a charcuterie board was my question. I don't know. Probably 10 years ago. Or 10 years ago. Oh, okay. So you were 34. <laughs> Uh, when did was the slingshot invented? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to add it all up. Yeah. If it's only for rich people, <laughs> <laughs> he knew what I was doing. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a French word. <laughs> rich people tend to use French words, right? And Simo loves that shit you though. You make millions and you're eating off a charcuterie board. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, it's hella funny. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be picking off that charcuterie board. Oh, oh. Sima doesn't eat cold meat, though. That's true. Uh, I, 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 w I would if it's off a charcuterie board because I know what you're talking about, like salami and all yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of stuff. I just didn't know that was what it's called. I thought it was just that That's cutting great. board. Now you get to say it all the time, and you get to look at people like they're fucking retarded when they don't know what it is. <laughs> you're like, oh, you don't know what a charcuterie board is. I can't wait for it. Sorry, your poor ass. <laughs> then you can fucking lock them up and choke them out. The the the, the uh, Yang Chris, Christmas party this year, and Steve was going to be like, "Oh, babe, can you grab the charcuterie board?" And then just pause, silence record, everybody, record skip. Do you know what that is? <laughs> your mom's like, "I got some goat head." Over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Real quick, oh. since the podcast got a little derailed there, um, <laughs> people have been freaking out about that shirt that Insima is wearing. Oh, Mark, yeah, I love it. Can you explain? Because I, I I put up a post on Instagram, mm -hmm. and it was like one of our most popular posts because nice. everyone was freaking out. Like, oh, I thought you guys were cool with Joe Rogan. What Thinking happened? Him. Yeah, so now everyone thinks that we don't like Joe Rogan. No, this is uh, based off a clip. I don't know how you'd be able to look it up because I, I tried because I was looking for the. I don't know if one. I don't know if it's called "Don't Listen to Joe Rogan," but Joe Rogan said, "Don't listen to Joe Rogan." Like he he was like he basically just said, "Don't listen to me." You know, uh, don't try a low carb diet. Don't don't try jujitsu. Yeah, the, the list of stuffs on the back of the shirt. Uh, say no to Joe. Uh, don't eat mushrooms. <laughs> don't do yeah. Don't do keto. Don't hunt. Don't eat game. Don't do jujitsu and don't do yoga. And. Uh, you know, he was just like, I, I don't know, he had somebody else on the show, I can't remember who it was, but uh, they were just kind of going back and forth, and Joe's like, he's like, I think I make reasonable suggestions, you know, I, I want people to be healthier, like, I want people to advance, I, I'm I'm for the advancement of, of people, I want to see them be able to move forward, I know a lot of people are depressed, and Joe Rogan gets, you know, he gets flamed a lot for a lot of different things, and he's like, fine, fuck it, you know, just don't, don't even worry about it, just don't even listen to me, like, it's, you're right, you're right, like, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, don't listen to me, and he mm -hmm. kind of said that, and I was like, that is sick, I was mm -hmm. like, that is so cool, I was like, I'm gonna make a couple shirts for that. Yeah, I, I tried explaining, and I'm just like, guys, it's a, it's a joke, it came from Joe Rogan, and yeah. right away, people were like, oh, that's it, I'm not listening to you, blah, 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 like, yeah, we obviously fuck. can't, we obviously can't sell them or anything, I would, I would never <laughs> do that, but I just... I sent some to him, but I don't know. You know, he's a hard guy to he's a hard <laughs> yeah. guy to get to. Yeah, this shirt has caused so many conversations for me because like, so funny. and it's it's always with dudes because because other people won't. You know, they'll look at the shirt. I've gotten people that are like, yeah, like fuck Joe. It's usually women, <laughs> and I usually don't say a single word. I'm just like, yeah. But a, a few guys are like, you you don't like Joe. I'm just like. Well, now it's now it's like and more then, yeah. of a now it's like more of a thing or more recognizable because uh, of the cancel culture stuff. You know, I exactly. I, oh, I mean, not right. that cancel culture hasn't been around for a long time, but I cre created the shirt like two years ago, mm -hmm. probably. You know, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, there have been guys who are like, I like Joe Rogan. I'm like, I do too. Check this out, and then we'll start talking. It's 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 yeah. pretty dope. Pretty dope. Anyway, back to my charcuterie board. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna bust out randomly so during this podcast. You, so if you um. You know, if you if you can schedule your foods, maybe it would help keep you away from uh, picking at whatever the hell is at said party, you yeah. know, because I think a lot of times people tend to do that. And we eat. We just make bad decisions when we're hungry. We talked before about not shopping. Don't shop when you're hungry. You'll end up with a bunch of crap in your cart. Yeah. Um, even when you go to a restaurant, if you know that a restaurant takes a long time, whenever we get back to doing some of that stuff, you might want to have a protein shake before you go or eat something before you go. Mm -hmm. uh, you go over to a relative's house and you don't really know what they're going to have food wise eat before you go. You could always eat more if they have something healthy, but 
the odds of ha- them having something healthy is probably not very high. So you may as well take care of yourself the right way uh, with your own food. I think you can also like run through a checklist when you're hungry. You know, first of all, you can probably review like, are you literally actually like that hungry? Like when's the last time you ate? Mm-hmm. What'd you eat for the day? If it's 2 PM and you haven't eaten anything, well then you're probably actually pretty hungry. Last time you ate was 8 PM or something like that. Makes sense. Right. Uh, but if you just ate at 12, then you could probably go a little longer and be, and be okay. I'm not saying to starve yourself, but you can, you're probably fine. Like there's probably nothing like wrong with you. Yeah. You probably, and you can kind of run through a checklist of things, make sure you feel okay. Make sure you, I don't know, blood sugar is not weird or whatever. If you're diabetic or something like that. But I, like for me, I just, I'm thinking, okay, when I was coming down and, and losing weight, I was just like, I feel pretty hungry. And I was like, all right, well, I'll try drinking water. I've heard people talk about drinking water. It kind of works, gives you a distraction. Mm-hmm. You can chew gum, you know, like, like what are some things you can do that aren't going to negatively impact you? Maybe you could have a diet soda. Electrolytes are super useful. Yeah. Because they actually hydrate you. So that's just. They hydrate you and they taste good. Yep. So there's, you know, there's a couple of little cheats and then you can kind of say, all right, well, I, I actually feel like I could use more calories. I feel like I could use something. Maybe make a protein shake. Maybe you have some yogurt, you know, you go down this list, some cottage cheese or some whatever, whatever it is, just these li- list of things that are going to do you no harm. They're not going to set you back at all. You're not going to be, you're not going to be sweating it three months from now because you ate cottage cheese, uh, you know, in the middle of the night or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to, people are going to like, damn, you're getting heavy off that cottage cheese, you know? Yeah. So try to find things that will have less of a negative impact on you. You know, yogurt, uh, hard boiled eggs are a staple of mine. I like, I like eating those a lot. Mm-hmm. And if you find yourself like not that hungry for plain yogurt or, um, uh, cottage cheese or hard boiled eggs, then you're probably not really that hungry. Cause if you were really hungry, you'd be like, fuck it, man. Yeah. I don't care if there's salt. I don't care if there's anything on it. I'm just going to eat it. So start to try to think that way a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, the, the one thing that, you know, we shouldn't forget is when, when you're doing all of this, it's tough. Cause when you are starting from when you're heavier, you're probably eating a lot of, a lot of foods that are highly palatable. Right. But when you're dieting, don't get, cause a lot of people fall into the trap of like eating and it's probably not from this podcast, but eating really low fat in general. So when people switch to like we, you just talked about Chris Aceto. So when they, you switch to really lean meats, like chicken breast, you're eating rice, et cetera. Naturally, you're going to end up eating a really low amount of fat. And when you're eating a low amount of fat, like you, your hunger can get very out of control because especially like, especially men too, like you shouldn't be eating only 40, 50 grams mm-hmm. of fat. So that in itself will can spiral you into overeating. So you do want to make sure that you have a certain amount of fat each day, whether you're, you're not doing keto or whether you are, you need to have a good amount of fat each day just for your hormonal levels, satiation, et cetera. Um, and you just need to just, just make sure that you have that because that's going to affect your performance. It's going to affect your mood. It's going to affect your libido. Um, getting in a good amount of fats with whatever diet you're doing is absolutely necessary. And fasting can do the same thing. You know, fasting can, uh, like entice you to overeat. You know, um, one of the things I've heard somebody say about fasting was, uh, that one of the most important things is to pretend that it never happened. Yeah. So like, it's just a, it's just a black hole of uh, a, a time period where you didn't consume any calories, but now it's not time to eat 3000 calories. Mm-hmm. It's time to eat some normalish meals. Yeah. They could be a little bigger than normal, or you could do like, I was doing like double dinners and stuff like that. You could do certain, certain things that are a little bit different, but again, you want to try to pretend you're not trying to make up for lost times. It's not like, all right, here we go. And uh, you're just, you know, over consuming uh, calories. Cardio can do that as well. Yep. Or any extra energy expenditure. So you need to be, you know, you need to pay attention to what's going on. I've been walking a lot lately, like more than normal. And, um, you know, I noticed that made me hungry. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I got to have a balance. You know, I, I you're going to have to learn, you know, what that balance is for you. Each person's going to be, uh, each person's going to be a little bit different. There's no real secret, you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff in terms of like foods. Um, we mentioned some whole foods and I, and we think that, you know, leaning, uh, leaning towards 
leaner meats and stuff like that is a good idea again to get leaner but like what Insema just pointed out you know you might need you might need to not even might need you need to pay attention to your overall fat calories because you'll you'll just kind of feel like hollow all day yes that's a great word for it. right it's that's like a sick. hollow feeling like you're not fully fulfilled you know you ate a bunch of stuff all day but you're just starving that's exactly how i explained <laughs> some of the foods that i eat sometimes they do feel a little hollow yeah yeah and then i'll kind of want to reach for more but yeah. and then the fat comes in and you're like Shing! <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah um sorry do you have more to, uh, i was gonna say like you can throw in like an avocado or mm -hmm. some butter or so you know like you don't always have to add in extra fat, especially if you, you know, if you eat like a ribeye or something or have whole eggs, but, uh, you might need to, cause the meat that you're eating, if you're choosing, you know, to eat more chicken and lean cuts of lean, uh, pork and things like that, um, you might have to, you know, dump in some extra fats in there. You know, I, I want to say this real quick. So, cause there, there are ways, especially like we've talked about this in other podcasts before, there are ways to lose weight without ever really tracking anything. And there, there are certain food choices you can make, the amount of food you eat in each, or the amount of meals you have, et cetera, that you can do this without tracking. But if you're someone that, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't even know where to start with my calories. I don't know where to put my carbs. I want to figure all this out. Um, a free resource online is the Precision Nutrition Calculator. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty detailed one where you can like enter in your uh, activity level, your weight, et cetera. It can give you a good starting point for your calories and where your carbs and protein and fat should be or whatever. But um, even before going all into tracking your carbs and, and your, your fat, you at least maybe want to try tracking protein. Cause we were just talking about how like it's necessary to have a certain amount of protein for your body weight, right? Well, if you're, if you're someone who's never really paid attention to that, um, you, and let's say that you, you're not even used to eating a lot of protein. Well, when you start and you feel like you ate a lot of protein, if you track it, you might have only actually physically eaten 130 grams of protein and mm. being a 280 pound male, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, that, that'll feel like a lot, especially when you're not eating a lot of protein. That'll feel like, oh, I'm stuffed, right? <laughs> but it's not that much. Mm. So if I would say to start anywhere, as as far as maybe trying to track something um just track your protein just try tracking your protein and maybe just have the goal of hitting if, if you set a goal of one gram per pound have the goal of hitting that protein amount and and understanding what that much protein looks like because if you can understand what that much protein looks like after a few times you don't have to track all that protein mm -hmm. like you don't have to track it every freaking day you now know what 200 grams of protein feels and looks like from the food you eat and now you can just kind of do that intuitively. It gets easier. Okay. You literally, you answered the question I was about to ask, which was like, how do people actually find, you know, their caloric intake or where yeah. they should be? Um, but when it comes to those calculators, they often ask like what your lifestyle is like, you yeah. know, like, are you active? Are you this? Are you that? Um, can people trust those to be accurate or should they always just kind of be like, okay, I kind of want to drop some LBs. I want to lean out. Um, maybe I'll just say that I have a sedentary lifestyle. Mm. Okay, so that that like that's why the precision nutrition calculator is pretty. It's a pretty good it's one. Good. It's a pretty good one, but you have to kind of be honest with that. And again, that's why I said you got to look at that as a starting point. Because even myself, when I work with someone and I set their calories, if for example they're like they're trying to drop and they don't seem to be at all for a few weeks, then I could make an adjustment. You can drop and see what happens there, or you can add some cardio. Mm. You can see what happens there. But generally, it'll give you a good starting point for where to be. Um, and the reason why I think that's good is because if you just like again, you start eating whole foods, that'll be better. But if if you just you know you're trying to diet, and some people have the habit of just starting too low, you'll drop a lot of weight, but it's not going to be something that lasts long because you're going to start eating way more again. So at least it'll give you an idea of the amount of food you should be trying to get to as you're trying to drop rather than, you know, going too low and rebounding up or being way too high and then continuing trying to trying to find that point where you can actually start dropping body fat. Yeah, tracking can be really valuable for many different reasons just to kind of make sure that you're on the right path uh, and Seema and I don't track but you have a history where you tracked and i did i didn't really track necessarily for my bodybuilding show but it was tracked for me i guess mm -hmm. i had like measurements of of food 
but I think measurements and um, like <clears throat> so, some sort of unit of measure is important. Mm -hmm. So like I've always said, I just weigh myself. You know, I, and and that for me is um, it's not as it's not as uh, you don't get the same feedback, you know, that you would if you if you weighed out your food and you calculated all that each day because you're you're seeing that like in real time every time that you have a meal. And that also may just by writing down and keeping track of your meals or doing it on an app or whatever may prevent you from eating too many times or like, you know, because normally when people are tracking stuff they meal prep mm -hmm. and they have their foods like the, the whole i don't even know how effective tracking food is like to be totally honest I, i'm not a i'm not a fan of it I, it's not my it's not like how i was kind of brought into some of this stuff but what i will say is it makes you accountable and most people are going to meal prep and when you cook chicken breast and you cook up a bunch mm -hmm. of rice and vegetables you're gonna fucking look great mm -hmm. And I think you could throw the fucking calorie app out the window at that point because you just cooked up a bunch of fucking chicken breast. You're going to be totally fine. You're going to get in shape. And, and you're also probably doing cardio. Like there's so many other factors. That's why it's so hard to say, Hey, look, this diet, boom, it definitely works this way. Yeah. It's like, well, you did 17 other things that were great for losing weight as well. So tracking the calories is huge um, because of the, cascade of disciplines that it can set forth you know just like waking up early in the morning i think having a discipline not necessarily to wake up early but to wake up earlier than you used to i think can cause a cascade cascade of disciplines where maybe you lay out the clothes the night before maybe you shower and shave the night before just so that you're you have your shit together mm -hmm. uh each and every day and then it's going to be easier for you to be successful because you're setting yourself up for those things i'll say this and i think um that there, there are levels to this. And I, I, even though you said you, you never tracked before, um, what you were, the things you were doing when you were getting yourself very lean, like, yeah, you weren't putting it in an app and seeing right. how much, whatever, but you had certain necessary habits to attain a highly, highly lean physique. Um, that, that you were pretty much just doing, you're, you're doing it without tracking. Right. 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 So, there are levels like if not you're someone, necessarily counting it, but it still counts. It still counts. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you it know, it still adds up at the end of the day, regardless. If, if I take out a macronutrient, I take out carbohydrates or I reduce fat. It's reducing the overall energy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're just someone who's trying to, you know, lose some weight and lean out a little bit, you're trying to just get it, you, you know, you're just trying to be kind of lean. You can get away with a lot of things without having to track it. Um, but if you're someone like you have this ideal physique and you're trying to get really lean and you're trying to get, you know, the, the six pack or whatever, there are going to be either very certain high, high level, consistent habits that you need to have, right. To be able to get there. Or most people I know that are able to attain those types of physiques, um, track, right. Right. Cause like, otherwise it's just kind of some guesswork. There's a lot of guesswork, right? So th th that's what you got to think of. I'm just trying to drop some weight. Am I just trying to drop 15 pounds, just 15 easy pounds? You don't have to pull out a scale for every little thing that's going in your mouth, but you do have to have some habits set. Are you trying to get really lean and, and, and kind of ripped, et cetera? You can do it without tr tracking, but it's rare. Like I don't know many people that get to that level without some element of knowing about what's going into their mouth having good habits or tracking diligently over time weighing yourself is huge right weighing yourself have it i mean you know we can kind of like say this whatever way we want and you can kind of lie to yourself about it but like if you're leaning out you will you will most likely be losing weight oh yeah and, and like significant amounts of weight normally um you know each person's different and every, i know under, i understand everybody listening is at a different uh stages but uh, most people I know, even people that are lean could afford to lose 20 pounds, you know, 20 pounds of body fat for the most part. Again, I realize everyone's a little bit different. And then also just, uh, measurements, you know, like fucking, I don't know, measure, measure around your waist, mm -hmm. you know, see where that's at. Just imagine if you're like, Hey, you know, I'd love to have, um, some disciplines that line up with me making my waist, uh, an inch smaller. Mm hmm and then what are those things going to look like? Okay, well, you're going to find a way. The, the trick here is like Gary Tobbs talks about this a lot. We should have him on the show coming up because he, he has another book out. 
but Gary Tobbs talks about how skinny people say to fat people, you need to move more and eat less. And he said, the problem is, is that you, you kind of just, not that you can't, um, it's, and not that it's impossible, but it's just so damn difficult. It's almost like someone with PTSD, you know, and you tell them, Hey man, just get over it. You know, just get over that kid that you saw blow up before your very eyes or whatever the horrific thing is that they saw. It's like, yeah, I, I might be able to figure out some ways to get around that or to get past it or to get through every day the way that I need to, but it's really fucking hard. It's really difficult. And there's a lot of people, they just don't feel good enough to move around enough all the while not being supported by their nutrition enough. Mm. And that's why we say start with the food first. And you could even make an argument to eat more food. Like we've seen this happen with a lot of people. They're like, man, you really have me eating a lot of food. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I know. Mm. Like this is way more than I normally eat. Well, yeah, because you are actually nutrient deprived. People that are obese are nutrient deprived. They don't have, they have macronutrients are not deprived of. A lot of micronutrients they're deprived of. Yeah. And, and they are, they are deprived of one macronutrient that is, in my opinion, the most important. That's protein. They don't have the protein in their body that their body really needs. That's what the body's in search of. That's why we keep eating. That's why we get so damn hungry. But when you start eating fibrous foods, when you start eating protein, when you start kind of doing a stand efforting type thing where you start to look at food as uh, nutrients and vitamins and minerals, fucking changes everything. And then you have energy for everything. Mm -hmm. So many things are dictated by the food. It, you you want to be, you know, driven by the types of foods that you're putting into your body. Have that be your starting place. Your training and everything else, they're huge. You, your training's massive. It's a huge part of it. But you're not going to be able to really train worth anything or be able to put a good effort into your training if you don't have good nourishment. Um, and so th I think that's you know, the most important thing here is to really hone in on, you know, what are these things that are going to make these measures, get my body fat measured or get my, you know, weigh myself or measure my waist. Um, what are some things that are going to really assist with that? And you just line those things up. Yeah. You'll get those things in alignment and you'll be good to go. Yeah. You, taking measurements is actually really, really, really helpful, if, especially since, this whole leaning out thing, you're going to be doing it for a while. Um, there's going to be weeks that you don't see the scale go down potentially, but uh, this has happened well, like a lot because I always have people take measurements. You won't see the scale go down, but your waist went down mm -hmm. a half inch or something happened during those two weeks where your waist went down, but your weight stayed the same. That that can stop you from starting to eat lower amounts of food and dropping even more because those type of stalls happen. Like people think the weight's just gonna go down like that. It usually goes down, up, stays down, mm -hmm. up a little bit, then stays a little bit, then down. Like that's usually how it goes. It's never just a straight line down. Um, so measurements can can be huge or actually are Get, huge. Getting leaner isn't always pretty either. You it's should not, know that ahead of time. Um, especially if you're trying to get shredded. But I know for women, they have a lot of complaints about getting leaner. They'll lose their butt. They'll lose oh, their yeah. boobs. Sometimes they'll even lose their hair because of they'll end up with, uh, I think it comes from like thyroid issues or something like that. But like, it's not always going to be pretty. You're going to look a lot different. Like you might think that you're going to, you know, look spectacular and you're going to look great. You're going to go through some weird stages. It's almost like becoming a teenager or something you're gonna go you got like an awkward period you know yeah. you got a stage where you're gonna look so different to everybody you know people are gonna be like, man what happened to your shoulders and what happened you know mm -hmm. your arms used to be a little bit bigger but in the end you'll look you'll look way bigger and you'll look way better it just it, the whole thing just it it takes time you first start losing you know 10 pounds 20 pounds 30 pounds things like that in you know for most people they do look a lot better but for a lot of guys, you'll just look smaller. For a lot of girls, like I said, they'll lose their butt and their boobs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they'll be like, fuck. But keep your eye on the prize and stay focused on it. Don't, don't uh, disrupt that uh, just because, you know, you're going to have a couple of side effects that maybe aren't desirable. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to talk about it on another episode. But as far as like maintaining, you know, maintaining the leanness, 
-hmm. which, you know, again, we can definitely do a whole nother section on, but like, you know, you just said what people can expect there. What, um, you know, once they do drop a lot of body fat, um, what else can people expect as far as like, okay, so they, they did this cut, we'll just call it a cut. How long do they have to stay there in order to kind of keep this look? Mm. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really like this because, um, if, if, if you, if you get to a point where you're very happy with the way you look, let's just say that, you know, yeah, let's say that you're just happy with the way you look and, and you want to keep it. You're not trying to bulk again or whatever. Um, you need to hold that for a little bit. And for some people, you can start trying to eat a little bit more food over time and see what that does. Because there's something called a diet break when you're mm -hmm. dieting, right? Like, let's say you've lost 30 pounds, but now you, no matter what you, like you've been doing, you're trying to lower the food. It's not moving. You're I'm laughing at diet breaks. I'm like the fat people. Like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Break. <laughs> breaking the diet, breaking the scale. <laughs> I know it's, it's, a, it's a tough one to talk about, but it's important though is important um there is a stage where it you can increase your calories for like three to four weeks quite a bit and when i say quite a bit i mean like maybe 300 or 400 calories that could be a meal and a half two meals right um and what a lot of people notice what tends to usually happen is you don't really gain weight like you don't gain much body fat, you don't gain anything. Some sometimes people actually, and this is common, it happens often, uh, you start to drop more. Um, and that could be something that you want to do when you have gotten to that level of body that you wanna maintain. Start eating a little bit more, see what your body does. Cause you might actually start dropping and you don't even want to. Um, and just, just hold that for a while. Get used to being that weight. Don't start eating a crazy amount of food because then you'll actually just have massive regain. But it would be a good idea at that point to hold, eat a little bit more, see what your body does. Become comfortable there. Because I think that the main way to maintain something is continuing to do activity there, continuing to eat around there, eating a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, and just do that for a while. Because that's like... The reason why you're comfortable being at 240 is because like you've held there and you 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 do everything there mm -hmm. for a good amount of time right. my my guess is like you said you were 240 at 16. you got up to 320 you started dieting you got down to this weight again but my, my guess is that like i don't know if you remember but initially when you got down to this weight was it really easy for you to maintain initially or were you having struggles in terms of uh, getting back up in weight? I'm curious about that, actually, because you're a different type of. Yeah, no. So for me, um, you know, it wasn't a. What I, what I did is every time I dropped weight. So if I lost like 20 pounds, I just kind of agreed that I would I would never be uh, above. above. So let's say I dropped down to 310. You know, I'd say, all right, well, I'll never be over 320 again. I allowed myself like 10 pound wiggle room. Um, somebody else might have to have a little less wiggle room than that, but I was mm -hmm. big. Um, so I did that, you know, all coming down and I came down in stages and I remember, you know, coming down from like 275 to 80, that was a pretty comfortable weight for me. Cause that was, that was most of my competitive powerlifting career was in yeah. that body weight. And so my body was, you know, at least it felt that way. I, I felt really stuck there and that, that one took time to break. Um, and then I think around that time is when I started doing a little bit more like keto stuff. Cause I was doing, um, Rob Wolf's, uh, paleo solution, um, type of stuff. I, I didn't follow it like a hundred cause I don't know some of the paleo stuff. It doesn't allow for like a lot of foods cause it can mess up your autoimmune system or your mm -hmm. stomach or whatever. And I don't think I have any of those issues. So I still ate some of those foods, but anyway, I, I, when I went to a keto diet, it helped me drop further, uh, just cause it helped me, uh, stick, stick to the diet better but the adherence i think is is the is the key thing for me for me it was you know finding something that was simple and finding something that ultimately ended up feeling pretty easy my body when i got down to like 260 and 250 and then finally around 240 my i would want to go from like 240 to 250 to 255 
closer to 260 and then i'd be mm. like oh shit you know and i'd start to so in the beginning when i first got down it was it was difficult and i had to figure out ways of managing it and that's where the walks came in i mean i was already walking but the consistency of the walking and the frequency of the walking was huge i i don't i know people have a lot of shit to do in a day but i i can't really think of anybody that i know personally that can't walk twice a day for 10 15 minutes yeah just that activity, you know, Stan, you know, Stan has like a little write up that he did for just this kind of protocol to like get lean and just like, he just encourages like move, like move and, or stand, you know, any opportunity you have to stand, stand, any opportunity you have to walk, walk, you know, just, just try to, just try to move a lot. And that's been huge for me because it's not about, it's not like, Hey, like, ah, you're kind of tired. Yeah. You know, it's, it's easy to go out and do it. And so, um, that really helped me personally. I think in general, when people are, um, you know, trying to maintain a certain look or certain physique, I think it's important that they find the diet to be fairly easy to adhere to. Yeah. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be times where, you know, you have to push away the cookies or whatever, whatever everybody else is enjoying or eating. Mm -hmm. And you won't have an opportunity to eat those things sometimes. But, um, you know, my, uh, my nephews have said to me before, like they have, you know, certain foods out there, you know, they're all like seven, eight, nine years old, stuff like that. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, uncle Mark, you can't eat these foods. And I explain to them, <laughs> I'm like, I can eat those foods. I just, I, I pick and choose when I eat them, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's a good mindset to have is that nothing has to necessarily be off the table for you and it doesn't have to be off the table for you forever. Maybe, uh, due to circumstances or whatever, maybe you do have to take stuff, you know, off your menu for a while Yeah. in order, you know, before, you know, before you kind of correct, uh, your, your habits and behaviors, uh -huh. maybe you don't have, maybe you can't buy those things or have them in the house and stuff like that. But for the most part, pizza, ice cream, all these things, you'll be able to eat them again. I ate something the other day. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, it's just, um, it was, um, uh, some pork belly and, oh. Uh, oh, and some ribs. Yeah. And I was like, ah, it's just a little more fat than, it's a little more fat than I would like for the moment for what I'm trying to do. And so I ate like three of the pork belly things and then I ate, uh, two of the ribs and the ribs are really good. And I was like, I want more, yeah. I want more of those ribs. But then I just sat there for a second. I'm like, you already tasted them, dude. Like, and you know, what ribs, <laughs> you know what ribs taste like, and you just ate them. It's not going to be part two. Yeah. I, and I was like, and I was like, they were, yeah, I was like, they were great. Like, just get over it. Like, it's fine. It was, it was good. Tasted good. I feel I, I'm not hungry. So I didn't eat, I didn't eat anymore. And these are the things that you're going to have to be able to have these kind of conversations with yourself like pull yourself aside and be like hey man hey man you know mm -hmm. what are you doing to yourself over here you know get a get a hold of yourself you got to paintbrush yourself back and forth and uh so that kind of stuff takes a lot of discipline and it takes a long time but if you kind of can keep your goals in the front of your mind uh you should be able to get there yo okay the the, the big thing when when you mentioned it um it's it's huge the the wiggle room thing that you were talking about right when you get down to that that body that you want to maintain, you kind of know how much you weigh. Maybe you're like 175 or whatever. Um, you have to have that wiggle room. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Um, you have to have that wiggle room because if you're trying to just stick to 175, you will weigh 177, you will weigh 178, and you can't let that be like, oh. So maybe your wiggle room is 175 to 182. You're not going to allow yourself to get over 180, 283 pounds. And when you do, you need to start reeling your habits back because you know, the same thing you're talking about is the same thing that that I do. I just was, it took me a while to find out what I need to do, the, the habits I need to have in line to have that wiggle room to, to maintain the weight of 240, 240 to 250 is my my range. If I start inching above 250, I know I need to reel what I'm doing back. And what I'm doing back usually isn't good, <laughs> right? So initially, like maybe I would have a little bit too much food from outside restaurants and I'd start to edge towards 250, 251. I'm like, okay, I can't do that five days <laughs> each week. Maybe it's only one or two days that I have like this, this wild food that I haven't had in a long time. Um, and the other days I keep myself in line with everything that I have in the house, right? That that's what I found out. Like I can still eat 
some of the, these foods. Um, I can't have Ben and Jerry's three or four days a week and, and, and not gain a, a lot of body fat. So maybe I only have it, you know, one day and maybe it's not the whole thing. Maybe it is the whole thing, but maybe I really like, that's the thing. Like it, after you get to that weight, you're going to be learning the things that you can do within the wiggle room that you set for yourself. Like, I think that's, that's huge. I didn't, I didn't even think about that really, but you have to set yourself a range that you want to stick between if you're trying to maintain this body. And when you start to get out of that range, don't just, don't do the fuck it. You know, mm -hmm. don't just say, oh, I'm 180 something now. This is okay. Because that'll turn into I'm 190 and this is okay. I'm 200. I'm cool. I'm bulking now. Right. <laughs> like, that's what it's going to turn into. Right. You got to have that range. Um, and it took, it took me years to figure out the things that I'm doing right now to maintain this range. So there are things that I do naturally now that, have, that have just allowed me to, to stay here. And the same thing with you. Right. Um, and that's huge. That's really huge. The, um, and I think also too, something that's been kind of underlying this whole conversation is that yes, you may keep track of your calories per day, but your calories per day, they add up to your calories per three days, per a week, mm -hmm. per, you know, two, two weeks, a month, uh, a year. So when you start to kind of think about it that way and it's like, okay, well, this is really about the management of calories over a period of time. That's going to get me there. You know, if you're, if you needed to weigh, if you weigh 300 and you weigh 200, you know, just random math to say you need to chop out 10,000 calories in this time span mm. to, to get down there. I, that's completely made up, but I'm just saying like, you can kind of almost look at it that way and that gives you wiggle room that gives you some room to say uh hey i can eat this here and there um and then like i don't know could you could you find a, a friend to like go eat pizza with so that you share you, you share a large pizza together and you still <laughs> you still you still crushed a good amount of pizza you didn't eat 12 slices but you ate like four yeah like three or four for a a, a someone who's you know, of good size isn't, you know, that's not, that's not going to do any harm to your diet. You uh -huh. know, it's not going to really be that bad. You know, can you, you know, what are some ways that you can, uh, can you share a dessert? You know, like I know some of these things, uh, seem demasculating in some way, <laughs> but, uh, just, I, I would work on the mindset and think about, you know, it, you're, you're making yourself stronger. You know, the sets that you do in the gym, I know so many people that, work really hard in the gym they do a lot of sets they do a lot of reps they know how to go to failure they know how to go all in on some of that and then they fall short outside the gym but imagine if they could take that mindset they have when they're on rep number 12 and they feel like they're going to die and they still are able to do 15 reps of something mm -hmm. imagine if they could push themselves that way with their nutrition we're like man i'm really hungry and there they are you know they they every time they're hungry they they fall for it every single time yeah you know, could they push that off a little bit, just like they push off the pain inside the gym? I know a lot of people that are really good uh, fathers. I know a lot of people that are really good mothers, school teachers, firefighters, police officers, all kinds of people. They're like, man, I don't have that discipline you have. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you <do>. <laughs> false. <laughs> you know, um, this is something that popped in my head the other day. I was like, does someone who's rich have more discipline than someone that's not rich? And I don't think, I don't think, I don't think it, I don't think they do <laughs> the, in that, in that particular thing of maybe making money, maybe they do, but not necessarily in general, like that, that other person could, uh, work on bridges every fucking day and wake up at 4am and, and pack their lunch and, uh, be loyal and faithful to their children and to their wife. And, and you know what I mean? Like they could have really strong and they go to church every Sunday. Like they, they really have really powerful uh, morals and ethics and values and they don't stray from them. Mm -hmm. But this one area of their life, you know, this, this food thing is a fucker for them <laughs> and they can't seem to get around it. But if you can, Hey man, you show up to work every day. You're there 15 minutes early every day. You bring other people coffee. Like, I think you can figure out this food thing. Cause it's not that bad. Like either you can list out four or five, like out of the whole foods we just talked about, you know, the just any natural food, you know, meat, vegetables, fruit, maybe some dairy pick from each category, pick three or four things that you like from each one. There's gotta be at least three or four in there, yeah. <laughs> you know, unless you just live off of uh seven 11 burritos or something like that. Mm. 
There's got to be something. Do we know someone that does that? Yeah. <laughs> J- Jeremy Avila. That, that yeah. there it is. I've not heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the gas Hello, station. Jeremy. Oh, he's, and he's a savage, too. He He'll is. come in here and slaughter all of yeah, us. Shredded, strong. But I think no people sense. have a lot more discipline and a lot more uh, heart than they give themselves credit for. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just, like, reiterate what you said, but also just add something that, like, we were all definitely born with the same amount, you know, like, depending on how you got rich or whatever, you probably developed a shit ton of discipline in certain in a certain area where someone else hasn't. But, you know, we all have the same brain, right? A little similar, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. All I was thinking about is when was the last time that I ate a whole pizza? Because I used to do that. Isn't that great? When's the last time that you ate a whole pizza? Uh, with man? Furious Pete. That I, I shocked years. him. I had, I, yeah, I had 12, I had 12 slices. He was pretty pumped. How many years ago was that? Uh, Probably about three or four years ago, yeah. You haven't eaten a whole pizza since no, then? No. I know no. I at least did that yeah. one year ago, <laughs> but I didn't feel that great afterwards. I used to do that quite mm. a bit. <laughs> John Cena used to do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, when he was totally young, right? <laughs> yeah, he went to, uh, there was a place next to the uh, place I used to work at, um, Sharky's. Um, <laughs> there was a place, I think it was called Shakey's Pizza. Yeah, Shakey's and, and they had, uh, Yeah, I know. <laughs> And they had um, like deep dish pizza, and it was like if you can polish off a, a deep dish pizza, uh, then you get like a then you get a free pizza. And he he like went there every day and <laughs> like every night, and like the guy finally, the owner of the place, was like I, he's like I know what you're doing, man. He's like pizza's on me anytime you want to come in. <laughs> but John's name is like in a pan, and it was and it has the date on it. Yeah, and his name was on there like <laughs> for like for like two weeks, you know. But it had other people's names up there, but he was like spread out sporadically through <laughs> through the thing. It was amazing. That's pretty cool. So uh, I guess last question before we wrap this one up. This one comes from James. Um, very general question, but. Um, you guys will be able to answer it very easily. Uh, he's just basically asking, um, cause he's going to, he's about to join a gym. Does it really matter what type of gym to sign up for? If he wants to get shredded, he's asking like, should it be just like a regular 24 hour gym or should it be a, like a weightlifting specific gym or something like super training? Uh, does it even matter? I, okay. So personally I would start by saying that join whatever like join whatever you have at your disposal because i don't want you know not having a, like a, mm-hmm, a gym with yeah. a lot of bodybuilders being the limiting factor it's like a plan of fitness but then you're like i'm too good for that so join whatever you have around you because like you just need to get in somewhere but if you do have a gym that has a lot of really just like dedicated people a lot of sh- like people that are you know like lean athletes etc if you experience. do have that experienced mm-hmm. um Personally, I don't look at that as intimidating. I more so look at that as a place where you have room to grow. Um, And I would say, see if you could find something like that around. Some people, when they look at that, they're like, oh, that's too much for me or, you know, that's too intimidating. So it might make them back away. That's just my point of view. I feel like you should find a place where you have room to grow. You see people that motivate you around you. I think that's that's a great place to be. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, to follow up on a lot of what he was saying right there, you know, if possible, try to find a place that's stimulating and motivating. Um, sometimes you don't always have the option. Sometimes uh, economics, sometimes logistics, like it's too far away. What I would suggest is that you occasionally go to a different gym as well. Mm. You know, you might want it like if you if you start going to this gym and you heard about another gym that's badass, that's a little bit further away. I think it'd be encouraging for you to go and to see, you know, what other people do at some of these other gyms. It might, you know, give you a different perspective, might give you different ideas on training. Um, I do like a Stairmaster. So I think um, if they have, like, if you're trying to get lean, I think if they have one, I'd put that to good use and and hop on that bitch every day. Cause I, I just, it's a, it's a really simple way to burn some calories and get in some good shape. Y'all really like that Stairmaster. I'm just like, oh, it's horrible. You guys love it. I'm just like, (laughs) no, it's horrible. I I dig it. No, no, I I almost joined another gym recently just to because they had like an entire row of Mm -hmm. Stairmasters. But I don't even know if they're open right now. But I'm sorry, my mind, <laughs> my mind just went to y'all walking into a gym, seeing just a high end stairmaster, and just oh, sing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I hate those things. Yeah. But 
<laughs> they can help. Um, I know like uh, Ron Penna is a big fan of the elliptical, believe it or not. He just uses mm. that, gets his heart rate between That's one. That's the funniest thing. I know, it's not Ron funny. Pena going yeah. like this. Right? I know, right? <laughs> Rogan talks about it all the time. Yeah. He'll show up at a hotel and then just go kill himself on the elliptical. Hey, it just doesn't. It's a fun machine. It just doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's that's the key factor there. But yeah, just try to find a place that's going to be a little bit motivating to you. But mm-hmm. that's great that you're going to join a gym, man. Go, go get it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I used to use elliptical a lot when I was uh, getting ready, getting off the bodybuilding show. Like the elliptical was my shit just because, again, I was just feeling like crap. Yeah. So my joints felt great on that thing. Cool. Mm. All this shit's so hard to figure out. And Seema, did you ever think that like, like years ago that you just wouldn't, I don't know, just wouldn't be able to figure it out? Like for the nutrition and like, I mean, now you're in the shape that you want to be in. And when you first started, it must have been like, man, I don't know, man, like this is confusing. I'm really fucking sore all the time. I'm doing everything I can. I got my creatine ready. I got my protein shakes. (laughs) I'm, you know, weighing everything. I'm real meticulous. But man, this stuff sucks. Yeah, no, 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 definitely. First off, I, I thought it was just insane to try to get bodybuilder lean. But then when I got there and I was there for a little bit, I was like, how the fuck do people stay like this? Or how do people just people stay so lean because I was tracking all the time and I wasn't feeling good because my fats were so low. So I was just, I wasn't thinking that you could be lean for a long time. That's And that people really don't stay there though, right? I mean, there's, there, some people are born, like not born, some people are, they have a propensity to just be leaner in general and they can hold a leaner body weight, but that stage ready freakiness, like really no one's walking around with that all the time. Stage ready freakiness. No close to it. A, yeah. mo- a month or so away from it, perhaps a month or so a month and a half away, you know? Yeah. But staying like that lean, I don't know anybody who's staying like when I say stage lean, people have different ideas of what stage lean is. Um, I mean, elite level leanness Mm -hmm. where like your butt has ridges. Yeah. Your, your cheeks have like striations almost. (laughs) Your cheeks are are sunken. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. No people, people don't and shouldn't strive to stay lean like that for a long period of time. You, you dip in there and you get out. Uh, Our boy, Doug uh, Fouché competed. I I don't know how he did. I, I need to check in with him, but he sent me some pictures, and I was like, what are you weighing these pictures, man? Like, 240, 250? He's like, I'm 280. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Excuse he's, me. And he's... He, yeah, I didn't even look this up. He is... He I is... Just looks... I was like, have you ever been that big and that lean before? He's like, not even close. But he's been working with uh, Chris Aceto, so shout out to our boy, Doug. Mm. Hopefully, he did well. I, I believe... What the hell's day is today? What is it today? Today is the 14th. Oh, maybe he competes this weekend. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, the Olympia is we... this weekend. Oh, wow. Right. Is yeah. it? Wait, Damn. Hmm? Yeah, the Olympia is this weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Gonna, gonna check some of that out. Oh, but I don't Phil know. If, did we ever mention There's Tom? Charles Glass, too. We didn't mention Tom. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look at his fucking back. He's so bubbly. Dude, he's a big dude. Big I know. Guy. How tall is he, by the way? <laughs> he's probably six, two or three. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's a big body. Like, he's a tall body builder. Yeah. Yeah. Is he? He's competing in the. Is he classic or is he just bodybuilding? Damn. Because six two, two eighty. Holy fuck! <laughs> we're just stuck. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah we're just. He closed my mouth before I start <laughs> looking <laughs> sus. Man, he looks great. Yeah. Wow. If I find some. He's got the striated glutes going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. It's a big dude. He's yeah. But bodybuilding yeah. is tough, man. I mean, for as good as he looks, you know, the, the, the high level, high level guys, they just have like, they almost look like they're wearing an extra suit of armor over top of even what he has right there. And it's crazy when you see the high level guys, but then you see them next to Phil Heath. <laughs> and no, this is, this is real. Cause like, um, who, who won last year? What was his name? Oh, uh, not, not Sean Roden, right? Not Sean. No, no. Um, oh, oh uh, Brandon. Brandon, yeah. Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry. Curry looks amazing. But when people say that Phil Heath has like this 3D look to his physique, because is it's not like, it, it's just, he's so bubbly. <laughs> like, it really is just like, he's just this thing no, of it's, lean it's, bubbles. It's cre- It's scary. And if he comes looking like that again, he's going to win. Yeah. <laughs> I right? feel like Dexter Jackson has that to a degree as well. He does. Dexter Jackson is just like, 
I see him at, you know, I used to see him at Gold's Gym quite a bit and uh, just quiet guy, just in there, just training his face off and mm-hmm. just, just in there grinding it out every day. But he's always wearing like a, like a basketball jersey or like a football mm-hmm. jersey. Yeah. And just this giant, just baggy stuff. And he looks fucking enormous still, even through, like, you still see veins through this, like, doesn't matter what he's wearing. They, you just see this big X shape from all yeah. these guys in massive clothes. But, you know, one person who I've always been kind of just like, oh, he didn't win or he's not going to win is Cedric McMillan. Oh, yeah. Because his, his physique is just so, like, everything is just there. Everything flows Is he a taller perfectly. guy? He is. He is yeah. I think he's a taller guy. He's, like, maybe maybe he's, like, 5'11". Aesthetically, he looks awesome. Aesthetically, he looks awesome. He's big, too. But he's just, like, not as bubbly and big as, yeah. like, Phil or Rami. But his physique is amazing. Yeah. When we went to see Phil Heath, it was crazy. Him yeah. just sitting there just being all fucking jacked and oh fucking gosh. huge. <laughs> it, it, makes it really is different. Like, it's just you can't explain why it's different. But his physique just looks just different. I wish they would study that shit. They need to study people yeah. like him. Like, get those muscles under a microscope. Or right. Let's, let's figure it out for the rest of us. Take some biopsies and, and figure out why he, he <laughs> is the way he is. They Maybe do. we could clone him. Can he still dunk a basketball? Probably. Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't ask him to he probably, do it yeah. anytime Crack. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to him. The bodybuilding uh, or Mr. Olympia shows this weekend. And good luck to everybody who's competing and. I know The Rock's doing that documentary on it and mm-hmm. stuff. And I really hope that that turns out to be something cool. I mean, just getting fitness in uh, in front of more people mm-hmm. I think is, mm-hmm. is great. Yeah. You guys had touched on on Tom for a second there. Oh, yeah. Um, Thomas. Some, some fun, yeah, shout out to our boy picks. Tom for doing his first uh, bodybuilding show. He did an outstanding job. Um, I, I think uh, place-wise, you know, in the bodybuilding show, I think he was saying that he was last in each category that he was uh, that he was in. Yeah. But you know this kind of that kind of stuff is really interesting to me because and he wasn't disappointed by it. He was actually was really motivated by it. And he said he's just gonna you know figure out some ways of doing better uh, next time. And he and he learned a lot. And I think that's that's a great way to that's a great way to go about doing it. But you know you're you're getting judged. Uh, you're you're getting you you have judges you know judging your physique in comparison to some other people and yes you're trying to win but i think it's a win a first of all just to get up there and b uh to have the best physique and the best showing that you possibly can and he did that mm-hmm. now when he goes to compete again if he finishes dead last again and he's in better shape than he is currently he probably will be you know pretty like upset or disappointed but i still don't think that you should be upset or disappointed i think these things they just take time yeah and if you can continue if you simply continue to get better that's where your focus has to be no matter how hard it gets it's going to be tough sometimes i but the greatest power thing meet i ever did i finished in eighth place out of there were 16 16 lifters but they were 16 of some of the best lifters in the world i i gave everything i had to that meet and went nine for nine but i still think it was the best contest that i ever did mm-hmm. um it was the most improvement i've ever had uh from one um from one contest to another i mean it was just it just felt great i I didn't even know or care where i finished i looked like the next day i i went down and i looked at the um they they just had it like written out i didn't even look at it that day because i just didn't care I, i mean i knew i wasn't first there were some people moving some crazy weights that day um and i looked the next day and i was like oh cool wow okay i finished like eighth place but Chuck Vogapool's name is on here, and some of these other great lifters' names are on here. I'm like, shit, man, I'll take any placing at all, any ranking, but mm-hmm. I did way better than I did last time. So I think anyone getting into competition, you know, just try to have that be your focus is, is improvement. But Tom did a great job. Shout out to him. He did an amazing job. He looked, he looked great, right? And he only cut for eight weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, legit, like, he made that decision with you. Mm-hmm. Um, eight weeks before i think you were like you should do a show he's like oh fuck okay and he just like (laughs) off to the races he was cutting he he and and he got to an amazing physique in eight weeks so if he had a little bit more time he would have been even leaner but he did a great job and he looked he looked like he could be on stage yeah The, the great thing is that like even though he did that so quickly he didn't look out of place right so he's gonna get even bigger and he's gonna get even leaner for his next show i think uh I, I like stuff like that. I like that. I like that you don't 
you don't just walk in you know what i mean like i, right, I, I yeah. like that i appreciate that you don't just go walking in and like kick everyone's ass it's yeah. gonna be it's a tough it's a tough climb and bodybuilding is really it's really really difficult you know these people that go to power thing contests and they sign up for a certain age category and a certain this and certain that it's all cool because it's motivating and they get a trophy or they get an award or they break a record that uh didn't have a previous record established <laughs> or whatever but they you know the federations have to start somewhere um but I, I think the main thing is just improvement you know mm -hmm. just that you're getting better and just that you got your feet wet how many people do we hear like i don't how, how do i where do i go to sign up for a power thing meet and you're like just fucking find one dude like go online and like mm -hmm. like look it up you know and figure it out and uh those of those people that are nervous or scared about a power thing meet a weightlifting competition crossfit event uh, a bodybuilding show go to one just just go to one you don't have to compete right away just go to one just go check it out you'll meet people there uh that will know more information about it you can gather more information and you can reload and you know go go some other time andrew want to take us on out of here i will got a couple of uh what they call it housekeeping things to take uh -huh. care of uh so we have joel sullivan coming on to the uh mark bell super friend series this wednesday at wow. 9 a.m so if you guys are not signed up right now you can do so by heading over to markbell.com you'll get a free seven day trial and then which gives, gives you access to this live chat uh it's been really cool me josh settledge and um more so jesse burdick interview Nice shot, almost. Uh, interview uh, some of Mark's friends for uh, this Super Friends series, and they've been really freaking cool. So um, if you, you know, want to get in on that, it's an exclusive thing. You're not going to get that anywhere else. You can do so at markbell.com. Um, we talked about other sponsors in this episode, but this episode was sponsored by Free Sleeve. Uh, head over to freesleeve.com. Use promo code POWER25 for 25% off your order and free domestic shipping. Please make sure you're following the podcast at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram at MB Power Project on Twitter. And we do have that new uh, Power Project newsletter that just went out. Um, it's gonna officially launch uh, January 1st, but if you guys register right now, you guys gain a, you'll get a couple of uh, couple of emails in your inbox. And by the way, we're gonna have exclusive content for that. We're gonna have uh, Q and A's. We're gonna have just tons of awesome uh, content that you're not gonna find anywhere else other than inside that newsletter. You guys can follow me at I am Andrew Z on um, Instagram and Twitter. And Seema, where are you at? And Seema Inyang on Instagram and Twitter and see me on Instagram and YouTube and see me on Twitter Mark at Mark Smelly Bell strength is never weakness weakness never strength catch you guys later